can you please present yourself and tell us what do you do? Uh, I'm Stefan Ignatovic. Uh, I'm a business developer from MVP Workshop. It's a blockchain research and development studio based in Belgrade, Serbia. And we basically develop any type of products on any type of uh, blockchain tech stack, depending on what the client needs. Sounds very interesting. Well, we think so. <laughs> um, today was the first day of Eternity Universe 1, and um, I guess you had the chance to visit some uh, um, presentations. Um, what was the one that gets you most excited, the one that had the biggest impact on you? Well, <clears throat> it's not that easy to decide, uh, but I would say that um, especially in light of recent developments and our visit to Berlin Blockchain Week, uh, almost a month ago, yeah. uh, it was uh, Helmut's talk about uh, business use cases for Eternity. And the reason for that is that we saw uh, primarily with work with, from work with our clients, but generally like just looking at the industry, uh, that what is crucial and what is missing currently in the blockchain space is proper approach to product development, meaning business development because most of the blockchain teams are mostly engineers and they like some blockchain stack for one reason or the other and they start the process of building their product bottom up which is not the right approach because you are not thinking about how can I make a product which will bring value to the user which will actually you know solve some pain point solve some problem uh, they are amazed by the potential of blockchain, and they're trying to force that on the average person on the street. And when we talk about mass adoption, which we are all aiming for uh, in the following years, um, without approaching uh, product development on blockchain like any other product, regardless if it's on blockchain or not, we are not going to do that. We need to look at products on blockchain like any other, like do the <coughs> A proper mapping of value streams, do the proper mapping of stakeholders, do the proper mapping of the user persona, their pain points, their motivations uh, when it comes to using the said product. And only when you do all of that, only when you do the business development part properly, only then should you think, okay, which technology stack, which blockchain platform is the best tool for me to implement this solution in the, in the real world. And I think the blockchain space is missing that, that type of uh, business development a lot. And that's why I chose uh, Helmut's talk. Because I think Eternity Starfleet and Eternity Consulting is doing a lot of things right. And I'm really, I mean, I'm really glad to see that uh, uh, some blockchain ecosystems are recognizing this and seeing it as one of the key elements for mass adoption. Do you see this as the most important uh, thing that is going to lead to mass adoption? Well, it's hard to say if it's the most important thing because <coughs> uh, you need to look at blockchain holistically. I mean, blockchain from the technological side has some serious issues right now. It's not fast enough for everyday use. It's too expensive for everyday use. Uh, but we are getting there. I mean, I'm not really worried about the tech side uh, of that. We'll, we'll get there in a couple of months or a couple of years. But I would say that like in the next two to five years, uh, business development, if not the most important, then one of the two or three most important factors that we need to put our focus on because we need to um, make products that are sustainable in the long term, that are not built on hype, that are not built on getting VC money just because we have blockchain in our name or in our product, yeah. but making blockchain products that actually need blockchain to work and when it comes to marketing it to, to users the average person on the street doesn't care if it's blockchain indeed or not. They, they care about does it solve my problem and indeed. is it cheap enough or is it fast enough or whatever so let's stop telling people this is amazing because this is on blockchain let's start telling people this is amazing because it does it does this this and this and it's better than anything else on the market right now I mean the users just don't care if it's blockchain or not. Yes, I totally agree with you. Um, which areas you're looking to disrupt? Well, <clears throat> I mean, in our work, uh, we, I mean, as, as with uh, most blockchain space right now, uh, fintech is definitely one of the hottest 
uh, spaces, and one of our biggest clients uh, is actually in, in that space. The other one is uh, an STO, an STO platform. Uh, but generally, we are not looking at things like that. We are not looking at which area we want to disrupt. We are focusing on uh, creating, structuring, testing, and implementing uh, product development processes in blockchain, which are uh, tech stack agnostic. So it doesn't matter if it's Eternity or Ethereum or whatever. Uh, we want to uh, share our knowledge and our experience and our approach uh, with people. So regardless of which industry they're in, are we targeting fintech or I don't know, uh, insurance. some sharing services or insurance or, yes. or P2P lending or whatever, yes. uh, that they have a framework and tools which will help them properly define their product. For example, one of those tools is um, the decentralized uh, business model uh, canvas, yeah. which we developed internally, which is, of course, stemming from the business, the business model, model canvas, canvas, which we all know. But for example, that is a really, that's a really good uh, plastic example. Uh, we, when the client comes to us and we start, we, of course, we start with, okay, let's look at the value proposition and everything, regardless of the tech stack. Uh, we didn't have a tool to validate the business model. I mean, the business model canvas is a centralized tool and it just doesn't work uh, for blockchain products. And that is why we took that as a base and made it decentralized. And you develop yourself. Yeah, exactly. And we are doing this, well, not every day, but almost all the time. And, uh, screening businesses, their use cases, and how you can actually help them to implement blockchain. Exactly. And uh, even when, when a client comes to us and we are developing uh, a product uh, for them, uh, we start with this. We start with the decentralized business model canvas and some other tools which we developed in-house and which we are sharing with the world. I mean, they're completely <laughs> free. <laughs> Just use them and do whatever you want to them. Uh, <clears throat> Because it's not about the industry. It's not about which industry is the hottest for blockchain. Sure, blockchain's potential is better implementable in certain industries. Yeah, there is better matches. Yeah, but honestly, I think right now we need to focus on you know creating proper frameworks for product development and not thinking about okay, how can we revolutionize fintech? How can we revolutionize uh, products in general so people will actually want to use them. Because, don't get me wrong, but blockchain is changing some key paradigms, which we have been used to for the last 500 years. I mean, even us, who are in blockchain every day, uh, have difficulty with handling all of that because our relationship to our assets is completely changing. Up until now, I had my bank to worry about, you know, my credit card or my funds or my transactions. I had my central bank in my country to worry about my national fiat currency and everything else. If I'm owning the crypto, now I have to worry about all of that. It's a huge responsibility. Yes, and people are so not ready for that. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so we need to figure out how to make products that don't force people yes. to do all of this of or that allow them to do this as less as possible. Yes, yeah, I understand because uh, sometimes the solution brings uh, a whole new set of problems that you couldn't think exactly. of. Exactly, and people think of blockchain, I mean, th that's one of the things that really bugs us. Uh, people talk about blockchain massively as blockchain is the solution. Blockchain, to everything. <laughs> yeah, blockchain is not the, solu the solution. The solution is the solution. Blockchain is just the, the mean, step yes. which you can use to implement that solution, yes. and that's it. Yes. Great. Um, something um, else I would like to ask you, and this is, uh, who do we all have to follow on the social media in order to stay up to date with the recent, most recent news and trends, let's say, in blockchain? Who are the people that you check on every day? Okay. Uh, so I don't think there's like one or a couple of people that are like the messiahs of blockchain. Uh, but uh, a couple of people that would definitely uh, single out is, well, definitely Vitalik, uh, because of the... Who's not giving Ether away? <laughs> <laughs> Vitalik is not giving Ether away. Yeah. I mean, because, come on, he's, he's like, yes. he's Vitalik. Um, one of the guys actually from, uh, from Serbia is Mikhail Bielic. Uh, he's currently working on a project which I can't really talk about because it's not live right now, but check him out. Uh, he's really well connected and he really has some smart things to say. 
All right. Well, thank you. I will definitely check him out. And uh, also, share with me your prediction for 2020. What comes next for blockchain in the following year? Wow, an easy question. Thank yes, you. right. <laughs> <laughs> and this is not a financial <laughs> advice. <laughs> well, um, like next year, I think we're going to see some consolidations uh, in, in some industries because we see more and more that big corporations are not um, they're tapping the toe. <laughs> yeah, but they, they're not like a couple of years ago, they were like, yeah, we're doing blockchain, but that was mostly for PR and hype and like yeah. uh, stock valuations and everything. I think right now they're actually finding proper use cases uh, for, for blockchain in their industries. For example, the automotive industry. Uh, I think we are going to see, on the other side, I think we're going to see uh, a big uh, step forward regarding uh, identities. Uh, for example, uh, we recently talked with, uh, <coughs> with the guys from a project which are basically going to, you know how you have like uh, hundreds of online identities. Whenever you go to some platform, uh, new username, new password, yes. everything is unverified. You can't really check if the person is the person yes. saying it is. So, for example, their platform uh, is going to uh, tackle that issue and basically create a repositorium where your identity is your identity and you don't have to have a hundred of them. Uh, what about privacy then? Uh, we if you want to go incognito somewhere. Oh yeah, uh, well uh, one of the features of that product will actually be that you have uh, full control on uh, what type and what amount of information you, you should, are using yeah. from your base identity to the, to yeah. the others. Uh, apart from that, uh, I think Africa is going to be pretty interesting and it's often overlooked in the Western world Yes. Uh, because Africa has one distinct difference uh, when it comes to, to, to the Western world. All of the people, people there, like for the last two or three generations, um, are uh, used to using mobile phones for, for pain. everything. Yeah. Everything. I mean, when a person is now born in Africa, it's not like it's not like in the Western world, like mobile phones. So you're going to YouTube or or whatever. Uh, it's they're literally using them for everything, and I think that's a really good base uh, because it overcomes a lot of the adoption barriers we currently have in like let's say most developed countries. I mean, not a good term, but let's let's yes. let's, let's say it like that. So I'm really excited to see what Africa is going to do because, for example, in the past decade. They had a huge boom in like maker movements, people leaving their regular jobs to like make products based on IoT, based on AI, uh, to improve agriculture in Africa and stuff like that. So I'm actually not sure why there's not more talk about, about, about that Africa it's coming. and blockchain. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So I'm really I'm really excited for that. Yes, definitely something to follow. Um, and uh, do you preach blockchain to your close uh, friends yeah. or family <laughs> and how do they react to this? Um, honestly, not that much because um, people who preach blockchain largely view it as a solution, as we said mm. earlier, and there is really no need, in my opinion, to preach blockchain. There is a need to preach good products and good services that solve your problems and stuff like that. And yeah, definitely when my close friends, family or acquaintances ask me, you know, what I do or yeah, what, what do you do? And, and then <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I explain like more or less, I explain the, the benefits of blockchain from the technological side. Uh, but I don't think there is a lot of sense in preaching it. Uh, that energy is better used focusing on, you know, further developing processes and frameworks to make better products and then I, I don't have to preach anything. Yes. They, they're gonna then it says by itself. They're going to go for it themselves. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's a very nice answer. Well, <laughs> I, I mean, that's, that's what uh, we as MP Workshop strive for in our approach and we really uh, have a huge sense of ownership when we work on a project and it physically pains us when something is not done right. So. Do you, um, let's say on average, um, how many of your clients come to you and they don't actually need blockchain for 
A uh, really good question. <laughs> uh, the first thing we do with any of our clients yeah. is ask and analyze, do you really need blockchain? Yeah. I mean, it, it sounds kind of paradoxical for a blockchain <laughs> artist studio who lives from work with their clients, <laughs> but we don't see any sense in pushing blockchain if it's not needed. For example, if a client, if, um, if we analyze a project and we're like, listen, in our opinion, you don't really need blockchain, this, this or this technology would be a lot better, so don't deal with this. There are basically two pathways from, from there. Uh, one is, well, I need blockchain for my VC, which is, which is fine. Okay, if you need it just to get money or whatever, then they'll think about if we're going to work with you, but yeah. I can understand that. I mean, the world works like that, and I can get that. But uh, if a client is, uh, doesn't have that sensibility, then we're like, listen, we have this, this, and this partner, like technological development partner, and we'll be more than glad to refer you to them because you need them, you don't need blockchain. <laughs> Great. <laughs> and the last question that I would like to ask you is, uh, which is your favorite blockchain city on the planet? <laughs> or let's say crypto city. Uh, like physical or digital? <laughs> physical. Uh, physical. Um, I would have to say Singapore. Singapore. Definitely. And this is not, um, I mean, Blockchain only accentuates my opinion. Uh, I fell in love with Singapore a couple of years ago before I even got into blockchain because there is one really key thing with, with Singaporeans. Uh, they are really prone to taking risks and taking technological risks. And um, their whole way of life, like how their society is structured, I imagine it, it, it's like, um, Oh, okay, I know this is not completely correct, but <laughs> it's simplified. Imagine it like what socialism would be if it had enough time to evolve into capitalism. I mean, they're actually all working for each other, and it's not the, cul the culture that binds them. It's the approach to life. And, I mean, all of that just gives an immensely fertile ground for blockchain to grow and be adopted. And there are some amazing projects Indeed. happening in Singapore. Indeed, so it's flourishing. Yeah, Singapore, definitely. Well, thank you. Thank you for this interview and for your time. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed this talk.